Hello, my name is Dr. Erica Hirschgreen. I'm from Michigan Tech University, and this research is part of my NSF career grant. So the main focus is to look at how genome size variation influences patterns of biodiversity in natural communities. At our field site, we have four blocks of eight plots. Each plot is five meters squared, and the plots vary in different treatments. So we administer these treatments each fall. The first treatment we administer each year is the disturbance treatments. And for the disturbance treatments, we first clip all the plants in the plot. And then we rake all the leaf matter and plant material up. And then we rototill the plots to about 15 centimeters and also remove all the deep rhizomes. The second treatments are the nutrient treatments. To administer the nutrient treatments, we just manually spread the nutrients on the plots. So nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in various combinations. And then in our plots, we measure various things. So for example, we measure the species coverage, so what species occur in each plot, how much space they take up, so their percent coverage as well as their genome size. So we measured this both before any treatments were administered and now we are measuring them each year. We also each year take clippings in a certain area of each plot, so a 0.2 meter squared area where we remove all the above ground plant material and look at the amount of biomass for each group, so grasses versus forbs, for example. Each year we take soil cores to look at soil chemistry, so we look at things like the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus in the soil, as well as soil moisture, and other properties that may affect plant growth and biodiversity patterns. Each year we also collect plants to look at plant genome size, so we collect wet tissue in the field and then we bring this back to the lab where we use a machine called the flow cytometer to examine the amount of DNA content in each plant or in the plant tissue. We're also looking at photosynthesis rates in the field, so we use a LICOR machine, which measures various parameters related to photosynthesis. And we're looking at how genome size influences photosynthesis rates under the different nutrient and disturbance treatments. Each year we also look at seed rain and seed banks, so we use these little turf carpets and we put them out two times throughout the year to look at what seeds enter the plots. And then we also take some soil cores where we look at the seeds within the soil bank. Other projects, depending upon what students are interested in or what we have going on in the lab, include measuring herbivory, so how much damage plants receive in the different treatment plots based upon their genome size. So we look at whole plant damage, as well as we collect leaves and uh, look at the amount of damage at a leaf level. We also take the leaves that we collected and uh, look at nutrients in the leaves to see how nutrients are influencing herbivory patterns in the field. We also have been looking at insect biodiversity patterns, so what insects are present in the plots and what functional groups they belong to. So for example, are they herbivores or pollinators? And we do this in different methods, and each different method targets different types of insects. So we suction insects up in plots. We also do sweep netting.
and we also do vein trap netting. We also look at the different soil fungi in the soil, so the different mycorrhizae, and we do this by taking soil cores and then taking the soil back to the lab and looking at what mycorrhizae fungi are present in both the soil as well as attached to roots. We also look at bird predation, so we made these fake insects such as caterpillars and put them out in the plots and looked at the rate that they uh, disappear and the signs of different types of damage that they experience. Our overall hope with this project is to better understand how plant genome size interacts with nutrients and disturbance patterns to influence biodiversity across multiple levels from plant genes to plant populations as well as multi-species communities, so the organisms that plants interact with such as insects, fungi, and birds. We also hope that our project can be used to help enhance both education and outreach as to the various factors that affect biodiversity. We also integrate our research into a worldwide research conglomerate called the Nutrient Network, which has sites that are set up in the exact same way, distributed all across the world, and we're able to integrate our research and the data that we collect with uh, similar measurements that are taken at these other sites so that we have a better idea of the factors that affect biodiversity globally.